Hello, everyone, and welcome to Schmidt List. I am your host, Kurt Schmidt, president and partner at Foundry, and I am excited for you to be joining me today. Why am I excited for you to be joining me today? Well, because not only do I have a fantastic, fantastic leadership consultant on the program today, but he's also a neighbor. I mean, we're doing this virtually, but he lives like only a couple of miles away from me. So uh, uh, we've been able to have coffee together and, uh, and uh, I'm just really excited for you to meet him and talk with him. And speaking of meeting new people, uh, you know, I should mention the little book of consulting or, or sorry, networking. It's consulting, right? I mean, you can use it as for consulting. Never mind. Anyways, the little book of networking. It's available now. You can get it on Amazon. You should go and check it out. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to introduce my good friend, my good new friend, Andy. Andy, how are you today? Doing great, Kurt. How about you? Oh, living the dream. Living the dream, Andy. Uh, so, Andy, tell me about the work you do and who you do it for. Yeah, I, I will. First, I want to say I love the neighbor thing. So I'm thinking maybe we can in post-production do a thing like where I'm like go over here and then I <laughs> literally like tap you on the head or something. Say, hey, who's yeah. your barber? And Let's the, do that. I love that idea. Yeah. Right. We'll, we'll need more than just the two barber. cameras. We're going to need like matrix cameras, you know? Yeah, we'll do it. It also looks so great in production. We're just It'll testing great. right now, yeah. right? This is just <laughs> testing, right? Okay. Um, fellow technology person, yes. So um, I'm sorry, your question again, please. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about the work you do and who you do it for. Yeah, so I'm an executive coach, a leadership developer, and a public and keynote speaker. And I awesome. enjoy working with folks who are technology leaders. That's my niche, if you will, with executive coaching, because I've been a technology leader for years and years, as you know, um, and leadership development. I love leaning into that with companies, um, technology leaders, and otherwise as well. That's great. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm guessing it's pretty a pretty boring job because uh, over the last few years, there's really been nothing that's impacted leadership that's happened in the world uh, in any any meaningful any meaningful way. I mean, there hasn't been like a pandemic where everybody's gone home and those sorts yeah. of things. I can I can imagine it's been a very interesting ride the last few years for you. Yeah, I, I'm still looking for my first client. There's just no business out there as far as I can tell. The market, <laughs> they're all the market good. They're all, it's all business as Everybody's usual, right? fine. Whenever yeah. I talk, they're like, no, I'm good. I, there's nothing good. I need. Yeah. I'm yeah. fully, I'm right at the top of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah, <laughs> like, great. Let me know when you're, when you're, when you're crawled out a little bit. Yeah. Um, Actually, I have extra. Would you like some? Because I've got extra hierarchy of needs I can oh, hand out to people. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's maybe yeah. that's what I need. I can need to like game it, like create problems for them and say, well, now you've got yeah. a problem. <laughs> um, yes. So again, boy, I'm going to keep riffing on this. I will I'll lose track of your questions. I think I remember your question your, or your comment. Like the, there's been no demand. Yeah. I mean, honestly, one way I would build on your uh, lovely and snarky comment is that I, I feel like, of course, with the pandemic, things have changed big time. And also, as you know, um, I mean, I've been a corporate guy. When I added up the numbers, it makes me feel much older, makes me sound a lot older than I feel, but like 35 years of technology leadership experience, right, is what I, by my own decision, ended this year. Yay, I'm so excited about that. So I'm done being a corporate guy, and now yeah. I'm my own LLC guy doing, going independent. And part of why I did that, honestly, was I just sensed sense both internally and externally there was just such a demand and such a need, a human need, frankly, for, hey, there's been a, can I say there's been a lot of shit going on? And, yeah. uh, you know, and let's, boy, I could use some assistance with that. Great. And so I, I, it's, my, it's my honor, frankly, to meet clients where they're at and help them with whatever they're struggling with at the workplace well, or otherwise. And the thing that, and you and I have talked about this, uh, you know, off mic, but, you know, the thing I think people are struggling with is the idea of authenticity, right? Because the idea of being authentic, right, means I've got to be myself, but maybe I'm not comfortable being myself. Maybe yeah. uh, I've been taught as a leader that I need to create a show or a, I've got to have a character or something around me where I act like a, like a leader mm -hmm. because that's what people are expecting from me. When I say that, how, do you, how, do you, how does that make you respond? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the struggle is real, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's a thing that almost everybody I think has struggled with or, or felt from time to time. I can remember earlier in my career, um, as I rewind it now, what did Steve Jobs say? You'll only connect the dots backwards, right? As I look back, I'm like, oh, 
I see, you know, 20 something or 30 something Andy and how I was like trying to build up this armor of like, okay, you can't touch me because this email was perfect or, mm, you know, yes. or the way yeah. I prepared this speech in PowerPoint. Is you, you've covered your butt awesome. all in all ways. Right. That's right. I am totally, you know, large and in charge. I've got the, the leadership thing. You know, I'm beyond reproach. Nobody can possibly ans- ask me questions that I can't answer. Right. And, um, uh, or playing small because I felt like, Ooh, I don't, I don't want to go out there. Uh, I don't want to know what the risk of going bigger, you know? Um, and so I see that and I've seen that over the years and many people I've been honored to lead and work with. And I see that now with my clients as well, as you say, especially with all the shit that's gone down over the last couple of years, yeah. people are, um, feeling in some cases, I think very, what's, what's the word, um, a little a little raw, a little exposed, a little, um, I don't know, you know, uh, shell shocked from all the stuff that's gone down. Yeah. And meanwhile, um, the demand for leadership execution, get stuff done. Hey, make it happen in terms of, you know, uh, get people back to the office and make it happen with your virtual team. Don't forget anybody, right? Any questions? Like, just do that. Right. And leaders are like, oh my goodness, how do I do this all? So yeah, there's a lot to be said, I think, for, um, to, to finally loop around to answering your, the, the key part of your question, how can you be an authentic and vulnerable leader? And in many cases, I think those two cross over while also absolutely getting the job done, executing, being that, um, respected, highly regarded leader who is showing like, Hey, yep, things kind of suck. And We've got a plan. We've got things we can do. I think balancing all that is, yeah, a modern day 2023 and beyond problem. Yeah, I think one of the things as a younger leader, um, when I was first in my first, some of my first leadership roles, I was really worried about being taken advantage of by the team. Mm. And that was a real concern of mine because I was, I was in charge. I had a lot of uh, power, you know, air quotes, um, in the in the organization, and and. For some reason, I had made up this story in my head, Andy, that you know that if I if I w- was too vulnerable or I showed too much of myself, that they would then have one on me or something, and then mm. I wouldn't have as much authority to get the job done as as possible. Is that something you've experienced? Yeah, being taken advantage of. I mean, the risk of that, the fear of that. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I would. I would say this, you know, and I'm curious uh, how you've experienced this also, Kurt, or, or your listeners have. Um, I've learned over the years, well, one of my great uh, mentor coaches and friends, Annie Boyum, uh, taught me this. Um, she said, you know, generally speaking, you know, not, not everything's a dichotomy, but this one kind of feels that way. People generally, leaders generally, will lean into either trusting first until proven guilty or not trusting until proven I can trust you, right? And, you know, you may have your bias, if you will, of being taken advantage. I have a suspicion of where, which side you might be on with that, right? You may too. I've got my own bias and other leaders have that. But I think depending on where we land with that, um, it's how our, you know, protectionism, if you will, um, which frankly, you know, this is an ego isn't necessarily a bad thing, but that tends to be an indicator of how our ego will show up. Either we're going to be protective, we'll be like, hey, like, don't you dare take advantage of me, right? Like. I'm a leader, you know, get your own shit together and then we'll talk, right? You improve yeah. me. Or um, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. You're like, how could you possibly fail? Look at all this trust I showed you, right? Both sides of those extremes have risks, obviously. Yeah, right. Well, that's the balance that I think um, was hard for me to, to learn over time yeah. because, again, most uh, organizations, Andy, and I'm sure you've experienced this, is that when you get promoted, there isn't really... Uh, leadership onboarding for those new leaders or new managers, you're kind of left to your own devices, right? And so you get promoted and you're very excited and then you start doing it and you're like, oh crap. So you start reading all the leadership books you can and you start you start trying to train your yourself in a way because all you really have is sort of your boss and you you're, you feel weird going to them and saying, I'm having problems as a leader because they just promoted you to a leadership position. So the last thing you want to do is go to them and say, I'm having problems uh, and tell them that they made a mistake, right? Right. Oh, totally. I mean, you're, I think you're keying into a real, um, a real common topic of the leaders that I coach. 
which is either a, um, you know, imposter syndrome type thing, like shit, I'm here. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing yet. What do I do? You know, or, um, you kind of a special flavor of that, or maybe a variation like you're indicating, which is more of a, like, um, okay, I need to look like I'm in charge, even though I don't know, you know, like there's, there's all kinds of variations that, that folks work yeah. through in that. And, you know, just to kind of tick off some things that I've noticed through my career of, of what I've done as a leader, but also as an executive coach now, um, some of the things that I've noticed have helped me and my clients are number one, having great peers, you know, folks that you can trust. Like when you can, you know, trust, I kind of imagine as a pyramid, like when you've got that basis of trust with somebody, you can go so much farther than if it's down in the basement, you know, like if there's a peer, like, Hey, I just got promoted. You've done this for a couple of years. What do you think? Or how do you do this? Right? Like that's just golden, right? Then you're prompting a conversation that can just be really, really rich. And a couple other things, you know, um, one, you obviously as an executive coach, you know, I'm a fan of coaching, but I've, I felt that both as a, uh, what do they say as a, as a leader and, a, and also a client, I'm thinking the hair club for men, for some crazy reason, I'm pulling us back. I'll come back. Uh, we're talking about, <laughs> and I'm also a member. You know, right. <laughs> so that's what it is. Thank you. I forgot the member of word. Yes. So as both a recipient of some great coaching over the years, some excellent coaching over the years, and now getting to practice it more and more, boy, it is really a powerful, um, process. That's really special. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a craft, uh, it's art and it's science. And it's going to yeah. be related to, of course, to mentoring and these other things and leadership, all these other things, but it's executive coaching, professional coaching is its own thing. And the final thing I'll just mention, um, is, um, you talked about, you know, what can I, where can I learn this stuff? And many people lean into that. You know, there are great books, of course, YouTube's out there, leadership development programs that you can get. And those can be golden too. I can remember going through those where I'd be like, man, I feel like I've been in back-to-back -back meetings like all day or maybe all year. And then you get that one leadership development or that, that class and you're like, oh, what a breath of fresh air. I'm thankfully not joining meetings, regular meetings today. I've got to learn something. I've taken notes and now I can share it maybe with one of those trusted peers. Like that is golden opportunity for growth in my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense. So tell me about your journey specifically, Andy, because me, yeah. it wasn't until much later in my leadership journey that um, the, biz, the company that I was working for um, it was a different company than earlier on, but um, that they brought in a coach that I would meet with uh, for about an hour, like every two weeks or so. And it was just a therapy session, really. It was <laughs> hardly a coaching session. It was just me complaining <laughs> about things. Um, but, uh, um, but earlier on, like I would have never considered a coach or anything. I mean, that, and, and, and the leaders that I was, and the people I was working for, they were not the types of people that had coaches and, would then recommend a coach or, or do any of these, these things. And I mean, there, I think back then, I think much less now, but back then for sure, there might've been more of a stigma about the idea of coaches and ther and therapy in general, right? Just immediately yeah. like, well, you can't handle your own stuff. Like what's wrong with you. Right. So yeah. do you, do you know, how was your journey shaped by coaching? When was coaching first uh, introduced to you and, and how did you approach, approach that? Were you, all in? Were you, did you have trepidation? What, what, how did that go? Yeah, I love that question. I mean, honestly, the first time I remember one of my leaders using the word even was, must have been mid nineties where mm. one of my leaders at that time, a uh, great leader named Lee Kirchman, he, he said, yeah, in some ways I consider myself more of a coach than a manager. And I just remember, I mean, I can think back, like, I think new synapses were firing as he said that I'm like, oh, a coach, like, tell me more. Now I'm curious, right? Um, and, you know, the rest is history for my sense, in a sense, but so much more there. You hit on something interesting, which is just the term coaching, you know, even five or 10 years ago, and especially 20 years ago, you'd say, oh, I'm a, I'm a coach. The question, the follow-up question would be, what sport? Right? Yeah. That's how we know <laughs> right. coaches, right? Um, and there's also, as you say, the, the stigma of, oh, what's, what's wrong? Why does this person need coaching? You know, and even to this day, Honestly, it makes me a little, little sad and a little frustrated sometimes. Folks will say, oh, you need to coach this person, you know? And, and it's right away, it's like this aggressive activity, almost like, you know, just take a, take a spearhead to that person. You right. know, they need a performance them. improvement plan. <laughs> That's right. You know, clearly there's a problem and you need to fix it. You're a coach, go do that, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, thankfully, in many of the circles of, of people and uh, affiliations that I get to collaborate these days, um, 
that that myth is getting busted, you know, slowly but surely as we speak. And I do think, here's some good news about it. I do think the people who have experienced uh, professional coaching, leadership, executive coaching, that brand, if they've truly experienced a decent coach, and there's a lot of really decent coaches out there, I think once... Uh, once you experience it, I think you tend to become a fan. Like I've rarely mm -hmm. come across folks who don't become a fan. And so for me, it was experiencing it almost like uh, not boiling the frog, but a positive version of that where it's like, I mentioned Annie Boyam again, where, where she's like, I realized, oh, back in the early 2000s, when we would just go for walks in the Target Skyways in that area, you were coaching me, but I didn't know you were doing that. And then later I'm like, oh, that's what coaching is. Okay. I want to do that then, you know? Yeah, right. Well, and and again, I think, you know, I think the the, the air about it has changed a bit in yes. in recent history. And but I think again, now we have this new challenge of virtual versus in person, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I mean, you read every you you read every study, you see every bit of research. I mean, it says people are just better in person. They can communicate easier, body language, pheromones, whatever you want to call it. There's there's a million different other triggers other than our, our voice that can convince people or get people to buy into ideas, new concepts, new thoughts, and those sorts of things. So when you're, when you're, when you're coaching a leader and you're talking to them about this sort of balance between this virtual world, I mean, how do you, you know, how do you approach it? What are your, what's your philosophy about it? Yeah. I mean, the first thing I'd say is um, coaching and leadership, for that matter, they are relationship-based businesses, you know, like to, to ignore that, you know, ignore that at your peril, you know, like it's, it's going to be hard to be successful if you don't acknowledge that, in my opinion. And uh, because they're relationship-based, um, as, you know, thankfully, at least in uh, we, we've all experienced the power of an in-person connection, you know, just, just how wonderful that is. Um, and we're, we're sensing, you know, thankfully a resurgence of that now because we can do that, you know, safely in so many ways. And I would just say this, there's a million different ways to build a relationship, you know, and it does, it is in-person awesome and perhaps the best. Yeah, you could certainly make that argument and I would, can't disagree. I mean, when you and I went for coffee, like, yeah, it was just so great, right? Like it, so much of the nonverbals and everything else is like, okay, yep, yeah, this is this is a guy, guy I want to stay connected with, right? <laughs> and I've also built, I think, very uh, effective relationships that have started via just the telephone uh, and then, then just video and so on, right? And so I, um, for me, it's a both and, and really, um, I like to stay curious about that uh, yep. because where, where I, where I get maybe sensitive or a little concerned about it is if somebody says, this is the only way to build relation. This mm -hmm. is the only way to lead. This is the only way to coach. Because I think if we, if we can examine the possibilities and heck, I mean, the technology keeps getting better and better and so on. Um, I, I think there's a million different ways to do it. And so my philosophy in a nutshell is find a way to do it with whatever the best technology and the best way for you to connect with the human beings around you, you have at your disposal. No, I get it. I, I think there, to your point, there isn't the right way to do it in terms of your presence, right? But it, it is about the, the words you're using and the way you're mm -hmm. sharing and the way you're showing up, right? Because we use the word, how do you show up a lot or the term showing up, yeah. right? You know, you, you get, sure. you know, you, you can't win unless you show up. You can't win unless you play the game. You can't score a point unless you right. toss the football, whatever, whatever, a million metaphors right um right uh so so but for me the the idea is that is that a lot of people when they reach these sort of challenges andy is that they immediately just assume that there's something wrong with them and and that could stunt them right because they might hold themselves back when they could move they could move forward but uh, we are products of our environment, right? So if I've had bad bosses in the past, I think those are the people I've learned the most from about leadership, to be honest. Yeah. Um, be because again, I, I learned what not to do. Um, but those people were, would definitely hold you you back 
uh, because they are they are in your way. And, and so there, I think there's a crossroads you kind of come to where you are like, well, if I stay here where I'm comfortable and safe, or I feel like I'm safe, but I've got my boss that is, is holding me back. Yeah. Or do I take this scary thing and go out and go to do a different thing? And, and then what if, what happens if I find out like uh, the boss actually was right about me? <laughs> like, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. there's the, there's the famous, uh, story about, uh, again, this is going to date me, but I don't care. But like, um, you know, when Shelly Long left Cheers, she's like, I'm going to leave Cheers. I'm going to do movies. Mm, no, um, didn't work out. Didn't work <laughs> out so well. Um, yeah. so, so I, I faced this early on in my career, Andy, where mm. I had a boss that was like, well, you, you know, you've gone as far as you can go. And I was like, I don't think I, I don't think I did. I, I don't think I am, you know? Um, and then I remember taking a new job and, and they were like, oh no, we got plans or you're going to the, to the moon and stuff. All right. But that transition, that, that crossroads I came to was really difficult to navigate on my own because I did feel alone. I did feel by myself in that because the people around me were not having those challenges. I didn't have a, a network of other leaders that I could lean on to talk to about that. I hadn't built that network. I hadn't cultivated that community. So sorry, I'm yeah. rambling and ranting here, but no, uh, no, you're uh, not. I, I'd like to get your result. response to that idea of like, how do you, how would you coach somebody to navigate through that if they are feeling that or if they hit that? Yeah. Well, I just want to honor what you said. I mean, feeling alone in your workplace or in your work, that's a hard place to be, man. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's, that's tough. That sucks. And, uh, can I say, you know, that we all through COVID, et cetera, have felt some degree of aloneness. Absolutely. Um, as another fellow coach and friend, um, Lynn O'Brien said to me, just remember, you know, this is the beginning of COVID. Everybody, you know, is going through trauma right now. Everybody's being traumatized. And I'm like, you're right. Right. And just right away, it just gives a little level or a lot level of compassion to the, the human beings around us. And I think, frankly, I think we're a little at risk of losing some of that now. Like we've been through it. We all want to be done. Um, let, we need to remember to be compassionate to each other. And uh, frankly, that's part of what I aim to do with my coaching clients and the people yeah. that I do leadership development for is just to, you know, I guess I just kind of automatically kind of did that with you a, a moment ago, right? Just this, wow. Shit, you said you fell alone. That's a big deal. Let's let that land and sit with that for a moment, man. You know? Yeah. Like, before we just stew it on, and I can see, you know, maybe there's even some emotion in your eyes there. I mean, I'm feeling it too, buddy. And I, I'm like, that's hard. So if we just yeah. keep going in the mode for, well, let's problem solve that. Oh, I don't want you to feel alone, right? You know, here's what you do, right? Boom, 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 boom. Let's do some advice and let's, Let's close up this meeting within our 28 minutes as agreed, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Can we slow the hell down? Right, yeah. You know, and just yep. be humans with each other. Do some, do some downshifting. And so yeah. that would be first and foremost, and maybe the only thing I need to say about like how I might show up to a client who is expressing something like that. Yeah. That's the beginning. No, it makes sense. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta focus on that. Um, again, that I think it goes back to being a good active listener, which is what I think you are, Andy, is, is you. And is, is that you're really listening to the to the words, and and sometimes a person might describe a situation that's happening, but you got to listen to the words that they're using to describe that situation because that will that will tell you the weight um, of what they're they're talking about. I've had so many employees come to me and they're like, "I've got this huge problem," and then they're like, "Ah, oh, this person, I don't think they like me," and I'm like, "That's not a problem." Like, what do you, you know? But again, like if they use words like "I alone," "vulnerable," "unsafe." Um, yeah. these types of things, like you got to stop in your tracks, like you're saying, and, and really focus on those things. But to my, to my earlier point, uh, you know, I just didn't, I didn't have that network. And so my advice to people is that's why, again, uh, I hate to keep plugging the networking, but you know, building that network that, that will help you get to where you, you need to go. Sure. You've got friends, right? You've got your college, uh, uh, people or your high school people, your friends with, or somebody you were on a team sport with or something, but they don't understand what you're going through, you yeah. know, at, at uh, a Fortune 10 company or something. They don't have your exact position. You need, to, you need to build up that network of people around you because they can help coach you or they can hopefully help direct you towards some more professional 
coaching if part of your career trajectory is leadership. Yes. Oh, 100%. It's an investment, right? It is. And, yeah. um, and uh, uh, no surprise, right? My, my belief is there's, there's a terrific return on that investment. You know, yeah. I'm not just talking the money, the dollars to try and get business, but the investment in your time. I mean, holy cow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to flip what you said instead of, you know, hey, talking about networking. I'm going to love talking about networking. We're, we're going to keep riffing on that. In fact, I feel like I should have just had your book ready. You're like, oh, you mean this book? The little bit, my new favorite book about networking <laughs> happens if you're being like, oh my goodness, that's who's interviewing me. Yeah. Uh, so you just lost out on your $20 uh, affiliate fee right there. I'm missing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we, we edit that out. I want that. Yeah. Okay. We'll um, edit back in later. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I mean, you, I think you gave me these words. I was looking at some notes from our first conversation today. Um, networking for the sake of community building, mm -hmm. you know, and what a brilliant thing that is. And I coach a lot, a lot of folks who are uh, more on the introverted side, no surprise, you know, a lot of very successful leaders, including technology leaders, maybe especially technology leaders tend to be more introverted. Mm -hmm. And even for those folks, for all of us, we, we all want some human connection and we all want somebody to believe in us. And we want somebody we can trust, right? Even if it's just a very small, tight group of folks, right? And to your point about, um, oh, there's this work problem. And then, you know, seven seconds in, it's about this guy, you know, right? Or that, if it only, if it were for that person, everything would be fine. Like, you know, there are, um, you know, I, I forgot wh who first said this, but are there any problems that aren't human problems? Hmm. Not really. I mean, you could make the argument about machines that, you know, and the problems and whatever, but, you know, at the end of the day, for most of us, I think as leaders and as human beings, um, the problems, so to speak, are with our human relationships. So how can we be um, authentic, vulnerable, effective? And I think, you know, what's interesting is that, that the two themes we were kind of noodling on coming into this, I'm seeing some crossover maybe for the first time as we're talking about this, just how much <laughs> like, like, oh yeah, like, could we be authentic, vulnerable, uh, effective, and do it, you know, in person, virtually, otherwise, like, yeah, let's do all that, right? And um, as much as that sounds like, as I say it now, kind of a hot mess, it's also like, uh, because of the work I get to do now, uh, full-time and love doing, I'm excited to help solve that problem. And that's what I love well, yeah. doing for. <laughs> well, like you said, it's, it's a, it's a hot mess, but it's reality. <laughs> that's it. That's right. Call a spade a spade, right? That's one yeah, of the right. first rules of leadership. <laughs> Tell the truth, please. Right. Let's do that. Yep. That's right. Well, and that's to my earlier point, Andy, like. The, the whole idea of where leadership goes, because again, like, and I've said this over and over again on the show, so I apologize to the audience, but people forget jobs, they forget projects, but they never forget a boss. Yeah. And so the investment you put into your leadership is, is, is an investment into your legacy as the impact that you have as a human being on this planet. So yes. you, your choices and your things can affect people and their families and uh, and have reverberating con consequences in their in their life. So if you don't treat it with uh, utmost respect, then don't expect that to, to be have it be reciprocated. Is all I'm trying to. Get. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know that's true. That's true. Like you know, you know, dep depending on how you want to play this, like karma can be a thing. You know, no, absolutely. Like, give it yeah. out and give it back. And I just heard recently a a phrase I love. I forgot who said this originally also, but the act of giving and receiving are the same activity, they're the mm -hmm. same motion. And I just loved how that put in my head, like an immediate kind of yin yang type of thing. Like, yeah, it is, you know, and um, a, a, a quote that stayed in my mind for decades now is, you know, never, never give without forgetting and never receive without remembering. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the both of that, right? Of like, the give, give and forget, uh, helps, I think, inoculate us a little bit of the, you know, give to get, right? Like, yeah, well, I'm going to do this, but they better yeah. give me a thank you text within two hours, right? Or they better, they better be grateful, you know? And yes, or, you know, so then it kind of like, well, are you doing it to be known as being a great person to get the thanks? Or are you doing it just to be a nice person, right? So just, yeah. you know, just check in with yourself, no judgment, right? But to just to give out generously 
And I think it builds on your point of like, as and when we can do that, um, at yeah. whatever level we are in our careers, man, oh man. And that's been my experience, especially this year. I mean, throughout my career, but especially this year, Kurt is, you know, going out on my own with pretty skinny branches, being a corporate guy all my life. And man, oh man, like the, the, the support of the human beings around me who are, you know, not just giving me business, but doing that, but also just supporting me like, Hey, you got this right. Go out, like join me on the LLC circuit, right? It's going to be fun. Let's do some work together. And stuff popped up for me last month with Cargill. Thanks to some, you know, friends I had just met like a couple months ago, Mary O'Connor and Marcy here. I feel like I'm not a name dropping today. I hope that's okay. Because I care. I, I'm not getting kickbacks. I want to be clear. It's just because I love <laughs> a lot of great for me. So I want to mention. No, it, it's right? great. It's great. Yeah. No, uh, I love it. I love it when people call out uh, 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 people that are supporting them on the show because it gives me ideas of people I should be talking to um, <laughs> for shows. <laughs> I'm more than happy about that. Okay, so Andy, last thing I wanted to ask you about too is is uh, is the future, right? So you know, I want you to get out your crystal ball here for me. And, Mm. And talk about, you know, um, the challenges that you see um, happening with leadership in the next few years. We've got AI showing up that people are concerned it's going to replace my job. We've had a lot of layoffs in the last year at some very large organizations. Um, you know, uh, the the way that the world is, at least here at the end of 2023, is looking is that you know the, the 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 economy is up, but you know people's people are nervous and people are 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 are, uh, are worried a bit about what's happening um, out, you know, out in the world. So, yeah. if you are coaching a leader right now, if somebody's listening to this, you know what would be some things that you would want them to focus on for next year? Goals to think about, uh, activities to explore. Um, what sort of advice would you give people going into a, a brand new year um, to, to start growing in their leadership skills? Mm, yeah. Boy, I love that question. Uh, of course, the, the first part of the answer is going to sound consulting like, well, it depends, right? Like, and, uh, and of course, right? That's a given. That's our free space and bingo here. And the other part I'll give is that, um, first of all, it kind of continues on a theme that I think we, we riffed on here. By the way, the time has just flown. I love having this conversation with you, Kurt. I can't believe we're getting ready to wrap up here. Um, it goes fast. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, let's not do that. Um, not with my voice anyways. I'll, I'll do the one. Can we deny that? I'll, I'll auto-tune that later for us. Okay, good. that's um, perfect. Yeah, I got the studio here. But I would say, for one thing, acknowledge the truth, right? Call a spade a spade. Like, don't. Um, don't try to hoodwink yourself or bamboos. You don't do that to your team. Like I literally was coaching a leader yesterday and um, this person, uh, you know, by the way, I need to tell everybody, you know, in terms of executive coaching and being ICF certified, which I am very important. I'm not going to mention any client names, right? I'm going to name drop people who've helped me, but I'm never going to mention a client. That's name. okay. That's just like in the therapy thing, right? Or, you know, that's right. Attorney client privilege or whatever. Just, I want yes. folks to know that that's one of the, Excellent things I think about executive coaching is that we've got that. So, but this, this human being I was coaching yesterday was talking about, Hey, you know, and with my team, um, I want to bring them a question about this upcoming year. You know, I want to get your survey responses about, should we have a, you know, hybrid meeting? Should we have a virtual meeting? Should we have an in-person meeting? Right. Going to harvest the data. And here in our coaching session, he was telling me, he's like, between you and I, like, we're going to do it in person. Like I'll be, I'll be pissed if they don't go back and somebody says, and they don't say we should do it in person. I'm like, okay, time out. Here's question. Why not just lead with that? Why not tell your team set, you know, give the team the gift of your expectations and your honest <laughs> truth, yeah. right? Why propose it, a test that only has one right answer? Right. And it's not, to, I'm not trying to make this guy wrong. Right. But we all sure. do that with different things that, you know, like as soon as I said it, he's like, oh yeah, that's why you're the coach, right? That's a really good question, you know? And it's like, yeah. Like, so I just said, you know, what would be, uh, you know, use his name, what would be a, a, your way of doing that 
just to lean out, like, just imagine your leader being able to kick off the meeting and saying, hey, I do want to get your input on this, but I, you know, I want to let you know what I'm thinking about this too. I really think it would be great for our team. This is the words you use for me, with me, right? I think it'd be great to have an in-person meeting once next year. I don't care if it's springtime or fall, but I'd really love to do that. So I want to kick off knowing that that's where my mind and heart are at, right? And in addition, I want to harvest your feedback, right? Like done and done. So yeah. once again, I forgot what your root question was, but that's, but that's one thing. Oh, it was about like leaders leaning into the next year. So number one, uh, call a spade a spade. Yeah. You can be, here's my direct Andy Nelson, you know, Nelson executive yeah. coaching encouragement to you. You can be authentic and vulnerable and honest. And people will respect you even more than you think they might because uh -huh. you are doing that. And it might be a Brene Brown thing. When you do that, when you're authentic and vulnerable, you unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. That's what you're doing. You want your team to be honest and vulnerable with you? Do it yourself. Lead by example, right? We've heard that for years and years. You can do it with this too, right? So start with that. Call a spade a spade. Be authentic and vulnerable. And with the other... Um, Important stuff you mentioned there, like, ooh, we get some concerns with the economy and is AI going to take over my job, right? Um, to me, it's a both and coin that, are, that I'll give real quick for us would be absolutely acknowledge the truth of that, right? Don't pretend it doesn't exist, you know, and, you know, out of, you know, arrogance, naivete, fear, whatever it is, like, oh, no, he's not, you know, AI yeah, doesn't exist, you know, or uh, the economy's fine, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, you know, getting <laughs> ready to lay people off, whatever it is, you know, like, yeah, just. Call what you know out as, as the truth and be curious about it. Stealing a, a, a you know, stay curious is stealing a phrase from my United Health Group, but my last corporate stint there. And um, so, for example, with AI, you could say, hmm, who on our team could really help us dig into that? Or what, how can I stay curious about that and really lean into it, learn more about it and not, not get freaked out that it's, you know, the robots are taking over the world because that's probably not going to happen in the next year, right? In fact, if anything, if I were to loop it around here to finally finish my answer, I'd say, if anything, what I'm noticing in, in my line of business and my camera angle and all this, uh, after many corporations and, and now doing a lot of coaching at Leash Jellin, is it honestly, the human connections are even more and more valuable, right? Um, we all got the phones, you know, constantly connected to us all the times, right? And when we can discipline ourselves to put them down or set an example of doing that, man, you know, an in-person connection is especially the thing, thankfully this year, like, whoo, that is like, that is like food for the soul. And the business news is that increases your productivity too, right? When yeah. you get human beings, people who feel good about themselves and feel connected to others, do great work. They'll be more productive for you. Love it. I love it, Andy. All right, Andy. Well, I've been talking to you all day. So um, we'll have to have you come back on the show again and talk more. But uh, in the meantime, if I want to get in touch with you and I want to find out about the work you do, I want to connect with you, where is a great place to do it? And uh, yeah. where should I find you? The two best places would be LinkedIn. Pretty easy to find me out there. Andy Nelson, ACCPMP. You'll find me on LinkedIn. And the second is NelsonExecutiveCoaching.com. N-E-L-S-O-N. Awesome. Well, and I'll have links for everyone in the description uh, below. So make sure you check that out and go take a visit with Annie and connect with him. Reach out. He's a great person. Invite him to coffee, buy him a copy, and uh, and I guarantee you'll have a good time. Well, Andy, speaking of good times, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Such Keep doing the great work you're doing, Kurt. Thank you so much for the invitation. This was awesome. <laughs> it was so fun. Uh, thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Before I go, I should mention one more time. The Little Book of Networking is available on Amazon.com. And guess what? I have a new book coming up very soon, and it's going to be a surprise. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel. If you're not subscribed, uh, make sure you subscribe or follow or do wherever, wherever I post this thing, <laughs> wherever you find it. Um, stay in touch because uh, we next year, launching a new newsletter, got a new book, uh, a whole bunch of new stuff coming out. So make sure you're paying attention to all of that. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>